Hello again. Algeria's young protesters are adding satirical and creative twists to their slogans. This as the month-long demonstrations culminate against the country's president, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who since abandoned an attempt to run for a fifth term in office. However, the protesting nation wants him to resign with immediate effect. <laughs> Protesters preparing the banners ahead of demonstrations against President Abdelaziz Bouteflika's rule. With their placards, often bearing political caricatures, witty slogans and civil demands, these protesters, mostly Algerian youths, want the ailing president to leave office. We are preparing these banners to tell the regime with all the ideas that we have to leave. We are tired of this regime and we are fed up. Our youth is tired of this life. They used to say that the Algerian youth is not interested in politics, but since the 22nd of February, the youth has proven that they are growing more intellectual than the regime. Right, let's expand on that. A number of countries on the continent held elections in recent history. The winds of change blew in the Democratic Republic of Congo late last year. Nigerians have chosen their preferred leader and South Africans will have that opportunity on the 8th of May as the country heads to the polls. Elections have become a big part of our democratization as a continent, but does democracy work on this African continent? To help us unpack this is Mr. Vosmuzi Sibanda, chairperson of the Africa Diocese. Spora Forum. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Always a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank what is much. the state of <coughs> democracy on this continent if we were to assess? Well, look, um, I think it's a shame, I mean, maybe to say the least, because the principles of democracy basically say that, um, you know, people should be able to choose their leader, you know, without um, any fear, you know, or fear that there'll be retribution if they chose in any other way and that um, the democratic you know principles you know include having an independent electoral body you know courts that are independent from mm. the from, from 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 the executive and we talk of the principle of the tries politica that says the executive the judiciary and the legislature are free of each other but what we see in africa and which is more practical in the bulk of the african countries is that the executive you know, by extension, is in charge of the legislature and is also in charge, you know, of the judiciary. So at the end of the day, we have got the president running the country, you know, without any checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Now, what it means is that then you have got uh, the president almost appointing, you know, the independent electoral, you know, commission. I mean, like you mentioned, what happened in Nigeria, where the, you know, uh, ne what do you call it, INEC, you know, decided to postpone the elections, you know, last minute. We saw that happening in DRC. Mm -hmm. And you want to ask yourself, who was the beneficiary of that? If that was not benefiting the incumbent, you know, president, or even in the change that happened in Dersi, which we almost think that that change, because in any case, Kapila was not supposed to stand. So the person that took over, you know, with what we are seeing that's taking place now, was it a free and fair election? Was it? the process of democracy or it was just something that was uh, stage managed. Absolutely. And another aspect is presidential term limits. So when you find uh, a president who does not allow for a conducive environment for there to be free and fair elections, they then have their hands in the constitutional cookie jar and the judiciary uh, cookie jar, which means that they get to extend uh, their term limits. We've seen it with so many countries on this continent. You see, this is where exactly where, we, where the principle of democracy becomes very problematic because when the constitution is crafted it is meant to regulate you know uh, those presidential term limits and ensure that when the time comes somebody must just walk away you know but you've got a situation where all of a sudden an individual because I don't think that it is at the instigation of the people that mm -hmm. you know these presidential term limits are changed but it is a the instigation of this person who's currently sitting who feels I have not done enough. I mean, we know that uh, the, the Kenneth Kaunda, you know, uh, many years back, they did speak about, you know, the presidential term limits that, mm. no, this is not right because when I have not even begun to do what I want to mm. do. But we, we've got presidential term limits. I mean, in life, we've got examinations. You write an examination, you can only write it in a given period of time. Mm. If you don't, you have failed. Mm. So who is this person that says, I want to have 20 years, I mean, as a president, when the country has got 14 million people, South Africa has got 57 million, I mean, Nigeria has got how many millions? So why does somebody think that they are so special that, you know, when their term comes to an end, they, 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 they shouldn't go? In any case, you, your first term is supposed to be four or five years. When people feel that they're not happy, you failed in the first time, you must just go mm. and not complain. How do we then reimagine how we are governed on the continent? 
I think um, I, I always want to refer to Geraldine Cadence, you know, uh, a court where he says, look, uh, every people, you know, gets the government that they deserve. If people, you know, allow themselves to be blackmailed mm. and abused by their leader, then, you know, they're going to get, you know, such bad leaders. But if people are inquisitive, if people are on the mark, you know, about the issues that relate to their governance, and they say, look, this is not what we want, you know, people begin to speak out and not sit down and say, ah, oh, well, it's fine, let's just leave it the way it is, then, you know, our democracy is not going to change. Are we not? So um, as, as citizens of this continent, you take a look at what's happening in Algeria and subsequently we're still none the wiser as to when the election there will happen. Mm -hmm. You take a look at the resistance that has been rising in Uganda as well. So you do find that citizens are speaking out, but there's no ear to listen. That is very true. I think this is where now we are saying, you know, when you look at the trend in Africa, you know, that we have got regional bodies, you know, that are gatekeepers, you know, of these, you know, uh, political leaders and they tend to protect these people. You've got, mm. you know, so many people dying in these countries, mm. you know, uh, because of, you know, uh, the, the, the political violence or because people are, are trying to resist, you know, the manipulation of the laws. And then you've got your regional bodies, your SADC, mm. your ECOWAS, your AU, sitting down and not saying anything because the lives of people don't really matter. But when we get to a point as Africa, when we say, when we talk in terms of principles of democracy, we are saying once a leader, you know, says they want to change the constitution or their people, Look at uh, what happens in, in, in for example, in, in Western countries. If about 100,000 people, you know, sign a petition, they want something changed, people stop and listen and say, okay, the populace has spoken. But here, you know, we can go on the streets, we get shot every, yeah. every day, nobody says anything. Yeah. And we will also have our leaders going to those countries, like we have seen our president here in South Africa going to Zimbabwe, you know, sitting down, sipping some coffee and saying, oh, well, look, ZANU-PF, you are good friends. But people are being killed, and you don't blame those leaders. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get to a point where when people speak about something that they're not happy with, we get the re regional leaders, you know, standing up and saying, what is going on? But the principle of sovereignty, as they say, you know, in terms of Africa, says the one that is in control must continue to kill the other people. He's sovereign as long as he's in, in, in charge. So that's where our democracy becomes very problematic because democracy must mean that people have a voice. People have employed, you know, the leader. And when the same people say, we don't want this person, and a lot of voices are coming up, it must be thoroughly investigated. Because it can be not, you know, without a reason that why people are absolutely rising. It's still a long way to go. It but is. we will get there. We are well <laughs> on that track to get there. Thank you very much. Always a great pleasure chatting to you, Mr. Vosmozi Sibanda is the chairperson of the Africa Diaspora Forum.